Good morning, dear friend. This is a brand new day. The Lord has given you this day to live and glorify his name. And I pray that you be filled with the Holy Spirit and you will enjoy God's presence. And though we are not able to move around much and meet our friends and neighbors, your prayer will be that somehow, even a telephonic conversation, you may have with some friends and your own church brothers or sisters, will encourage them strengthen them and give them hope and fill with the Holy Spirit. And I pray that your life will be fruitful and useful. God bless you. And this morning it is my joy to meditate with you a very short meditation from the book of Ephesians chapter 3. I like to consider these two days, today and tomorrow, uh, this prayer that Apostle Paul prayed for the Ephesian church believers. And this is a prayer for all of us. And this is a way we need to pray. So if you want to pray according to God's will, study and read and study the prayers of the Apostle Paul in uh, this letter and also in uh, uh, Colossians in, in Titus and um, so let us begin this my first part of this, mess, this prayer is found in chapter 3 of Ephesians verses 14 to 17 I would like you after this meditation read this passage and try to recollect what I am going to share with you Today, concerning this first part of the prayer. Um, his prayer is to God, the Father. It is interesting to note the different things Paul says about the fatherhood of God. Number one, God is the Father of Jesus Christ. This you will find even in chapter 1, verse 23. I mean, chapter 1, verses 2 and 3. And also verse 17 that we have read. And then again in chapter 6, verse 23. There are two ways the word Father is used in his prayer. The first way used is there is paternity. Uh, it is a word, uh, word to express uh, the fatherhood in the purely physical sense. And the second way is the fatherhood, the most intimate relationship of love and of fellowship and, and of care. These are the two ways the word Father is used in the prayer of the Apostle Paul. So, the first point is God is the Father of Jesus Christ. And the second thing is God is the Father to whom we have accessed. Uh, access. Chapter 2, verses, verses 18 and also chapter 3, verse 12. In the Old Testament, God could not be approached. He was not uh, accessible to people. You remember uh, the parents of uh, Samson. They had no children, but they were God-fearing people. And so one day God appeared to his mother and uh, told her that, God is going to bless them with a son. And he even told her what name to be given. And so Samson was actually born by the promise of God. And uh, she was, of course, puzzled. And uh, she went and reported this to her husband, Manoah. And um, so they prayed, Lord, uh, please 
appear to us one more time and let us know how we should bring up this child whom you are promising. And so uh, God honored that prayer and he appeared to them again. And uh, he told them uh, the name and also how they should bring Samson up. And then the angel of the Lord, God, has disappeared as he ascended back to heaven. Now in response to that vision, Manoah was so afraid, he told his wife tremblingly, now we will die because we have seen the Lord. And of course, her faith was more solid and uh, substantial than uh, his own faith. He, she encouraged him. But the truth is that the understanding of that time was God is unapproachable. We cannot see God and we should not see God. Anyone who looks on God will be dead. That was the understanding. And uh, this is made clear in Judges uh, also uh, concerning Gideon, chapter 13, verse 22. These verses, please read uh, after this meditation. Okay. Um, now, the, in the temple of the Old Testament, again, there was this there was court and then holy place and then the most holy place in the court anybody could come and in the most holy place only the priest could go and minister but the most holy place was shut for everyone except the chief priest the high priest and that too only one day a year the day of atonement and that too only with the blood of an uh, animal which was killed for the sins of, uh, for the chief priest himself and then for the people of God as well. No other day, not even the high priest could go in because that was the seat of God, the Ark of the Covenant. So that was the understanding and uh, But what is the one solid center of a Christian faith? It is the approachability of God. God today is approachable. He is reachable. He is touchable. You can experience him and you can come into his presence anytime, anywhere and enjoy his goodness and his mercies. All because of the work of Jesus Christ on the tree of the cross, the Calvary. And remember, it was that curtain in the temple separating the most holy place from the holy place and the court which was torn from top to bottom the moment Jesus said into your hand O God I commit my life what does that mean with the death of Jesus Christ an entrance into the very presence of God is now wide open. Hallelujah. That is the blessing of Jesus Christ and his death on the cross. And we can therefore now enter into the very presence of God and experience him and enjoy him. And uh, so this is the privilege that we have today. But we have a God who is near. And then God is the father of glory. Again, uh, Ephesians chapter 1 verse 17. And uh, we must not forget one thing when we approach God. He is holy. With, we must approach this God always with this one thought controlling our actions 
and our behavior and attitude when we approach God. Whom am I approaching? I am approaching a holy God. And that is one thing God also wants us to remember all the time. And that also means no one should count on God's love in order to remain a sinner. You know what that means? Many people have this attitude. Oh, God is love. You know, it doesn't matter how I live and what I did. Ultimately, he's going to forgive me and love me and take me into heaven. My friends, God is love, but never forget he is holy. And as such, we cannot count on his love in order to live a sinful life. God said, you be holy because I am holy. And so if you consider yourself to be my son, you be holy as I am holy. And our God will never compromise his holiness and his standard. So this is again a, a, a revelation of God. And fourthly, God is the father of all in a general sense. No nation, no man, no church, no denomination um, has uh, exclusive possession of God. God is a universal God. He is for everyone. No one is exempted from his forgiveness and his salvation. Everyone is included. And then again, God is the father to whom thanks must be given. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 20. All praise and glory and honor and worship, everything must go to him and him alone. And lastly, God is the pattern of all true fatherhood. While we teach our children, to call God their father, the only conception of a father that child has in his mind is you as his father. So how does your children consider you? What do they think of you? What do they know about you? So when you teach our children to address God as your father, immediately your picture comes into his mind or her mind. And if there are people who are listening to this, who are already fathers, and you are trying to bring up your children in the fear of God, please remember how you should project yourself to your children. Because you are teaching him to address God as our father. Be a pattern. Follow the pattern. God is a pattern for of all fatherhood. And may God bless all our fathers to project Jesus Christ to your children. God bless you. And this is God's plan and purpose for you. I pray that God's mercy and grace will rest upon you. And God be favorable to you. And his Holy Spirit will continue to lead you and guide you. Make yourselves available to him. And get rid of all the things that are hindering your connection with God and your usefulness to God. Let you be a father in whom your children will see God himself. God bless you. This is my prayer. And God has blessed you. Amen. Have a good and wonderful day. Enjoy your life. Amen.